there, folks. So, uh, today I was thinking about Goethe's theory of color. Um, sounds very abstract, sounds very niche, maybe not that interesting, but it actually is fascinating if you think about it in the right way. Because essentially, Goethe's theory of color is a totally unique type of perspective on a totally mundane phenomenon. Um, Newton did his work on optics obviously before Goethe, and, you know, and and he attributed color to the wavelengths of light. You know, the, these wavelengths of light, those, that's what color is. It's the different frequencies of light, and our eyes perceive it in, in different ways. If it's this wavelength, it looks this color. If it's that wavelength, it looks that color, right? That's Newton's theory of, of optics, um, essentially. Um, and Goethe's theory is completely different. And the reason why it's different is because he sees the observer as a participant in the phenomena of color itself, like a rainbow, right? So like a rainbow, you know, you cannot take away the eye that it sees the rainbow and still have a rainbow. The, the, it's a phenomenon of, of with the eye interfacing with the world, right? Well, Goethe sees all colors kind of like that. Um, color, it like, is what Goethe noticed that was foundational, is that he noticed that shadows had color. And then, that that's weird, right? Because shadows are the, kind of like, the absence of light, right? That's where the light doesn't go, is in the shadow, but shadows have color. How can shadows have color if it's a wavelength, right? And if you try and measure the wavelength of the shadow, there's no color. There's no, there's no waves there. There's no light coming out of the shadow if you try and measure it. But you see it. So what's going on there? We can see things that don't exist, apparently, and that's an optical illusion to the New Newtonians. But to Goethe, it wasn't an optical illusion. It was illustrating a fundamental truth about the way that we perceive colors. Um, the truth is, is that our eyes create these colors. And so what's going on with the shadows is that the color of the light that casts the shadow um, will determine what color the shadow looks like to us. Why? Because our eye, just like, you know, it fills gaps, like we, we, we see patterns and our eye will fill in patterns that are missing, our mind will, right? We'll take the input from the eye and kind of smooth it all over so it makes sense. Well, um, the color of the light that, that creates the shadow will determine the color that we see the shadow to be, which means that the, the, the actual colors of the shadow itself are coming from our mind. So in that sense, it's an optical illusion. You know, it's not really there. We can't measure it. In another sense, it's absolutely not an illusion. It's totally objective. And the way that works is, first of all, we can both look at the same shadow, point at it, and agree. We, you and I will see the same colors, as long as we're not colorblind, of the shadow. So our minds are creating this, and it's predictable. We can say, well, shine this light in this color, and you get a shadow of that color. And, totally lawful and predictable. So it's not just me and my subjective experience. We're having intersubjective experience. You're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing, but both of us are seeing it using our brains and not our eyeballs. Interesting, right? Or rather the interface between our brains and our eyeballs. And so, you know, it, it, the reason I find this interesting, and I'll keep this real short today, uh, is because it changes the nature of subjectivity and objectivity. It really challenges the foundations of objectivity as, as, as a measure of truth. Because here we have this experience that we can both point at and agree upon, but it's completely subjective. It's, being, it's an epiphenomenon of our mind and, and, and eyes. Um, and we both experience the world that way. Perhaps there's a lot of other things like that. Perhaps we have a lot of other experiences in the world that are intersubjective, but not objective. And how would we know? Because if I look at it and you look at it, we don't see it. We go to measure it. I mean, I look at it and you look at it, we see it. But we go to measure it and we can't see it. Um, and I guess that would be the indicator. But perhaps we haven't measured everything and perhaps we don't know what's you know, objective and intersubjective, and perhaps it's very difficult to tell the difference. And perhaps the difference is not as important as we think it is. Perhaps our, our shared experience is also important. Anyways, um, that's just what I was reading about today, um, and uh, yeah, hope you find it interesting. I, I think it's fascinating. All right, have a great day. Bye.